John Vile, uh, author of Organizing Successful Tournaments, the uh, fourth edition now already. And we're going to explain uh, today about round robin tournaments. Uh, round robin tournaments can also be used for leagues, but we'll talk about that on a different video. Basic premise with uh, round robin is that everybody competes against everyone. Now make sure that <clears throat> everybody is competing with everybody. If you had an odd number of uh, entries, then the way you would figure out, make sure that everybody's playing everybody, is you would just hold A constant. So A would play B and C would play D. Then we would rotate those three, one. So A stays, we rotate three. Now A plays C, D plays B. We hold A constant, we rotate through. A plays D, B plays C. If we were to rotate again, A would play B, but that would take us back to here. So basically, all we're trying to do here is to make sure everybody plays everybody. So the initial uh, start up to make sure that everybody's playing everybody is to scroll through that way. If you had an odd number of entries, then the Y stays constant. So A plays B and C has a Y. Now we would keep this constant, we would rotate, C plays A and B has a Y. We rotate, C plays B and A has a Y. If we rotate it again, we would be back to the beginning. If we had like eight entries, then we would keep scrolling and we would just move everybody this way. And the same if you had more entries here, we would keep C would go down to here and then to there and then and we would just rotate people through. All we're trying to do here is to make sure that as we're preparing the schedule, that everybody uh, is playing everybody. So as an example, um, if we have eight entries, so A plays B, C plays D, E plays F, G plays H, we keep A constant and we rotate everybody. So if C comes up here and then B goes down, E goes down, F goes down, uh, H goes across. We just rotate it. So we keep rotating so that everybody plays everybody. And then what we do is, let's just say we had three locations. We'd say, okay, A, A and B play each other, C and D, E and F, G and H, A, C, E, B. We keep just dropping them down onto the uh, schedule. With this, particular schedule, we have a full tournament, except for the very last game, but only one game to finish it off. That would probably be an unsatisfactory way to end a tournament, uh, to only have one, to have, only have two teams of the six playing. Probably better off to start the day with one game and end with three. So what we did is we just switched it. So A, B here, and then C, D, E, F, G, H. We just worked away so that the single game begins the day doesn't end it. So now the question is, well, uh, is that it? Everybody's playing each other, we got everybody on. Um, is everybody gonna be really happy with the schedule? And so we could take a look at back-to-back -back games, locations, uh, and so on to see how happy they were. So you could look at this, if you had eight groups uh, in your room, you could have everybody look at it. Um, but let's just see what the implications are. So this is the schedule. This is when you're playing. So now we can take a look at back-to-back -back games. Well, who's going to be uh, most happy with their schedule? Um, Z is pretty good. They play a game, they have a break. They play a game, they have a break. They play two games, they have a break. They play three games, pretty good. A is pretty good, they play, they're off. They play three in a row, they're off. They play three in a row. That's pretty good. C is pretty good. Um, H and F would probably be quite unhappy. D would probably be the most unhappy because they play two games, they have one break, then they play five games in a row, and then they have a break. So they wouldn't be very happy. So somehow we need to rearrange these games so that there's roughly an equal amount of back-to-backs. We can't, we can't make it so that they play, they're off, they play, they're off, they play, they're off. Uh, but we need to make it roughly equal for all the entries. Now let's assume that the first location that they're playing at is a professional sport complex. Fantastic setup. 
let's assume the second location is at a, a high school which has a, an all right uh, facility and let's assume the last one would be let's just say an elementary school which would have maybe an all, all weather gravel field or a smaller gym uh, to compete in so whether it be basketball or soccer you can pick your your areas well who's going to be happy who's going to be unhappy well team b is going to be very happy again because five times out of their seven games they're competing in the very best facility uh, team d who also had a pretty poor schedule in terms of back-to-backs is also going to be very unhappy because they're playing five of their games on the poorest facility they only get into the best facility once uh, another team that might be somewhat unhappy would be f because they're paying five times in the okay one but they're not playing any here uh, team G is again playing five games on that all-weather field or that small elementary school gym while the others are playing in professional facilities or high school facilities. So now we need to take some of these games and rearrange them so that we're, that that's more equitable than it, than it currently is. So it's not simply a matter of having everybody play, but we need to then rearrange to get back to backs in order and to also get it somewhat more equitable in terms of uh, facilities. So equal back-to-back -back is important, equal distribution of playing areas uh, is important as well. So consideration for grade schedules, um, we'll take a look through all of these uh, in a moment, but uh, we're going to try to make it as equal as possible to get on the best location, the next best, the next best. If we can't make it perfect, the higher seeds are going to get a slightly better uh, get on the better locations a little bit more often. The final games of the schedules should hopefully be between teams that are close. Now, it doesn't really matter for the standings because round robin everybody's playing everybody, but it does matter for excitement of the tournament. So if we go back for a moment, um, let's assume that A is the best and B is next best. Uh, so A doesn't even play in the final game. Uh, and they play against the fourth seed, which is probably pretty reasonable. Uh, but this is the second seed, and they're playing against B, C, D, E, F. They're playing the sixth seed, so second against six, probably not a real close game. Uh, C and H, probably not a real close game. E and G, probably not a close game. So we'd like to make that a little bit more exciting, so having the final, the closer teams play each other then. We also need to decide uh, home games. So again, that's an advantage in baseball in terms of last bats or hockey for last uh, line, line changes. And we're going to uh, give that roughly equal for everybody, but if there is a slight advantage, there's an unequal number of home games, we're gonna give a slight advantage to the higher seat. And if we go two times through the schedule, so if we go through two rounds, then we're gonna to try to have the home team be, or the stronger seed be home the second time through the schedule, not the first time. And if there's extra home games, then extra games will go to the higher uh, seed as we just talked about. So we could take a time here and have you try to do all of that. Uh, to do it perfectly is probably gonna take you about an hour. Um, but uh, let's just see what happens. Uh, look, we've done it for you. Um, basically what we're doing here is a uh, this is the first game, third game, second game, fifth game, fourth game, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So those are the game numbers. These are the teams that are competing. And this is the uh, the home column. So let's take a look at, to compare the schedule that you just prepared uh, with this one, and we'll follow through the different uh, the different seats. <coughs> so. In terms of back-to-back -back games and breaks, um, you know we take a team. Let's take three. So three plays, and they're off. They're off. They play again. They play again. They're off. They play again. They play again. Pretty nice schedule. Um, one, they play. They're off. They play. They're off. They play. They're off. They play. So pretty good schedule. And if you work your way through all these different. Uh, variations for all the different teams, you'll find that the back-to-backs are pretty good. It might be, 
if there's a bit of discrepancy, it's with the final seed. So six plays, 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 uh, and then they're off, uh, and they play, and they play, and they're off, and they're off. So if there was, if we couldn't get it perfect, then unfortunately the, the lower seed is going to get the least best uh, schedule. So again, we want the higher seeds not to lose because they're tired or because of a poor schedule. We want them to actually be beaten because of better skill. <clears throat> Court one, let's just say that's the professional facility. Let's say this is an elementary school. Um, how many teams do you compete there? So if you take, if there's six games, they're gonna be, uh, sorry, six teams, they're gonna be playing five games. So as we take a look at it, the number one seed plays three games on the better court and two on the less uh, less desirable court. Number three, team number three plays one, two, three on the better one and two on the less desirable one. The fifth seed plays one, two on the best facility and one, two, three on the less desirable one. So the top three seeds are playing are getting their extra game on the better facility, the lower three seeds are playing on the less desirable uh, facility. <clears throat> Here's your game a close one. And again, it doesn't have to do with uh, final standings because everybody plays everybody, but look at the final games here. So this, this is the final game. One plays two, three plays four. Before that, two plays three, four plays five. Before that, five plays six. This is going to build a lot of excitement. If we had one playing six at the very end, uh, those are the kind of games that often teams just get frustrated with. Uh, the six six place team gets frustrated by the first place team is just putting them down. Uh, sometimes fights break out. All the kind of there's just it just brings bad bad blood to the end of the tournament. To end it on this kind of a high note with teams that are very close to each other would add a lot of excitement to the the, the tournament. The first column is the home team. The second column is the away team. So if we take a look at one, they're playing one home game, two game, they've got three home games. Team one is away once, twice. So they're home three times, away twice. Conversely, six is away, away, away. So they have three away games and two home games. So the top three seeds are going to have three home games, uh, three two away, and the bottom three are having uh, two home and three away. So we're getting a slight advantage again to the top seeds, and we want them to be beaten, not because of a, a tougher schedule, but because uh, the team that beat them was a better team that day. And I think we just did this one. Yes, we did. So basically, a uh, summary for round robin. Basic premise that everybody plays everybody. And to figure that out, it's the number of entries times the number of entries minus one divided by two. So if we had, let's say as we use in our example, if we had six entries, it would be six times six minus one. So that'd be six times five is 30. Divided by two is 15 games. So that's how you would determine the number of games it takes to complete a round robin tournament. The advantages, well you have true standings because everybody competed against everybody. Seating is relatively unimportant because if you get it wrong, uh, everybody plays everybody, so in terms of the final standings, it doesn't matter. However, uh, if you can seed, uh, it will potentially add excitement to your tournament. If you have multiple playing areas, uh, it also is helpful because since everybody's playing everybody, you would maximize those playing areas. If you're to look at the double elimination uh, video, you'll notice that in double elimination, all, most of the playing areas are used in the first two rounds or three, and then it just gets less and less and less. Uh, so with round robin, we're using all, all the facilities all the time pretty well. Uh, and nobody gets eliminated because everybody's competing against everybody. The disadvantage, well, it takes a lot of games. And the other one is going to be because everybody's playing everybody. So one plays six and one plays five. If we have 16 teams, one plays 16, one plays 15. 
So we're going to have more uh, lopsided play. The best use is uh, league play, and also uh, when true standings are important. True standings are going to result because everybody has competed against everybody. We've not eliminated anybody because of the uh, format we use. Now sometimes I've seen this happen where uh, they say, well, there's too many games to complete a true uh, round robin tournament. So they've not had everybody play everybody. That's not a good choice. Because, as you can see in this, in this format, let's assume this is our number one seed, number two seed, number three seed, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. If we don't have everybody playing everybody, but everybody playing the same number of games, so they play three games, three games, three games, three games, uh, three games, then you get funny results. So the number one seed won all their games. The first number is the is this one. The second number is the, the column. So for all of these scores, that would be the the row. That would be the column. Uh, so number one has won one game. They've won second game. They've won three games. Number two lost to number one, but they won against number three. They won against number four. But look at number uh, five here. Uh, five played six, seven, and eight, and won all three of them. So there would be a tie for first place between the first place team and the fifth place team because uh, we've not had everybody play everybody. So that is not a that is not a way to reduce the number of games. What you can do, however, is take the the full round robin number of entries and divide them into two groups or three groups and then have the, the top entries compete with each other to determine uh, the actual uh, seating. So if you had a round robin and eight entries, it's going to take 28 games. If you had 12 entries, it'll take 66 games. If you had 16 entries, it'll take 120 games. That's a lot of games. If we did round robin with doubles, so we're having it into two groups, um, then it would take 16 games 34 games and 60 games, so now the numbers are going down significantly. Round robin triple, um, so you get into three groups, 23 and 50, these include playoffs, and round robin quadruple, where you have four groups that would take only 20 games and 32 games. So all of a sudden, uh, 12 entries takes only 20 games is, uh, is pretty good. Single elimination, 12 entries would only take n minus 1, so it would be 11 games. Double elimination would be n minus 1, it would be 11 times 2 is 22 games. So uh, dividing, dividing uh, everybody into uh, four groups for, say, 12 entries, so that would be three, three teams each, and then having them compete in a playoff is going to take less games than a double elimination term would. So this is certainly, it's going to take you less time. Everybody's playing two games. Um, many of them are playing three. Um, nobody's playing five or six. Round robin quadruple for 12 entries is going to assure everybody of two games, uh, balance the games out a lot more than double elimination. And therefore, I would never use a double elimination. I would try to break them down into uh, pools. Even for eight entries, uh, single elimination would be seven. Uh, double elimination would take uh, fourteen. So you got two extra games uh, with round robin double, but it's going to take you fewer rounds to complete because you're using your uh, locations more effectively than you would in double elimination. So you'll be done more quickly with round robin uh, double. So be sure to see, and uh, it will all work. <clears throat> so how do you see? So, all the numbers are a little small maybe, but we'll zero in a bit. Um, if we had two pools, or two divisions, and we had six entries, we try to get the number one seed here, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, to try to separate them out and make them roughly equal pools. If we have seven, that means we're gonna have one pool of three and one pool of four. So the seventh, we go one, 
two, three, four, five, six. Oh, why not here? Because this is the top seed. We're going to give them a little bit of a break. So the seventh goes to joins up the pool with the second seed. Eight. Then we go back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The seven moves up here and competes with that. So we try to see, we try to balance the pools. If we had three divisions, we use the same principle. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we have an extra one, like in 10, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, 10 goes down here, stays with the third seed. If we have 11, the 10 goes to here, and 11, we go to 12, everybody's the same again, and we would just work our way through 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, so that's how the seating would work uh, in terms of where the extra seat goes as well. For playoffs, if you want to know, uh, let's just say we had two pools of uh, four, four entries in each. If we want to know who the top uh, seed is, or the, the winner, uh, we could just have the winner of the A division and the winner of the B division compete with each other. Now we know who came in first. So, if we just had that one game, does that mean the loser of that game is the second place team? It doesn't, unfortunately, because maybe we didn't seed properly for that day. And maybe the top two seats are in Division A. So if we want to know who's first and second, we need to take the top two uh, finishers from each of those pools. If we want to know who the top three are, we need to take the, the top three from each pool. Because again, we could have messed up, not likely, but we could have really messed up and had the top three seats in one pool and the lower seats in the other pool. So. Depending on the number of finishers that you want to award, those are the number of entries that you should take out of each pool. You want to know who the top one is, you take one from each pool. You want to know who the top two are, you need two from each pool or division. You want to know who the top three are, you need to take three out of each uh, pool to make that work. Um, then when we, uh, that would be like a single elimination that we're gonna put them on. Uh, but basically there we're going to try to make sure, as we indicated on the video on single elimination, we would put the pools into different uh, locations so that they would compete against each other later on in the single elimination playoff. If we had three instead of four, rather than creating more columns, uh, the four would be a buy, uh, the four would be uh, a buy uh, there in order to make it all work. So um, basically, we can next take a look at how it looks uh, on the, so rather than, rather than having you do it yourself, it's also it was difficult to create just the schedules, just it took a lot of pages to make that all work. The best way to get the tournament again is to uh, access the, the online schedules from this book and to uh, download the one that you like and then have the computer do it for you. We'll do that next. So uh, to go online to look at the different schedules, you'll notice in the round robin section that there's uh, round robin three to eight, so that's for three to eight entries. And most of those cases, uh, they'll all, all be scheduled there. Then nine to 12 entries, two sets, one for different locations per division and one for shared location. Sometimes we may have uh, two separate facilities and we want, if we have a number of uh, divisions or pools, we may have one division in one location and the other division in the different one. Sometimes they're going to be just all shared. So we're always, we're just going to be using both facilities and we're just going to have to make sure that everybody's in both. Uh, for 13 to 16 entries, again, different locations and shared locations. At Round Robin Playoffs, we'll deal with that in a minute, but you need to kind of pick the one that you want. In, our, in my case, uh, for a demonstration today, I've just gone to uh, Round Robin 9 to 12 entries on shared locations. And then we'll pick this one. And then you can have a choice here between uh, going through the schedule one time or going through the schedule two times. Let's just pick uh, 
one time through the schedule. And then, as we just talked about, uh, depending on how many finishers you want, you need to pick the right schedule. So let's say we're, we want to lose who wins bronze or gold and uh, silver, who came in first and second. So then we need two finishers. So we'll go to the top two finishers in our division. And then there's uh, 40 schedules in here. And that last page, like all those different uh, folders, would have about 40 schedules. And now we need to pick the one that we want here. So the way this works is we have a round robin with nine entries coming from three divisions, uh, two locations that are shared. And uh, we're going to go through one rotation, and we're taking the top two. Uh, if we went to a different one, round robin, uh, 10 entries, uh, three divisions, one location, one rotation, top two. This one is two locations shared, this one three locations shared, four locations shared, uh, so the, the schedule just varies accordingly. So let's just grab one. Uh, let's go, uh, let's grab this one. And this one here is our uh, nine entries, two divisions, two locations shared, one rotation, top two move on. So let's just uh, go through this, and this will be the same as in other tournaments. So round robin, uh, August, uh, division one, division two, and it automatically populates uh, the teams here. So as we see them, so our number one seed will be here, and number two, number three, number four, number five, and automatically we'll put them in those those divisions. So let's just uh, let's just plug those in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, sorry, let's go to. Location A of A, location B to B, uh, day, let's um, so go Monday, 1 o'clock, Tuesday, 2 o'clock, Wednesday, 3 o'clock, Thursday, 4 Four o'clock, Friday, five o'clock, Saturday, six o'clock, Sunday, seven o'clock, Monday, eight o'clock, tab, and then it's completed. So in this case, we have uh, two divisions. So this is the round robin, August, Division 1. Uh, first game, team number 3. 1 will play 6, 3 will play 7, 7 will play 1, 3 will play 6, 6 will play 7, and the final game would be 1 playing 3. Again, this would be the, uh, the closest because we have 1, 3, uh, 7, uh, 6 and 7 playing each other here as well. Um, and then we're trying to spread it out over the uh, different locations. Then. This is uh, uh, Division 2. It has the, uh, the one extra seat, so it's going to take uh, more time. There's also going to be, let me just scroll this just a little bit. So there's two games on the first day, well, there's only one for the other division, that's because there's extra teams. And then there's one game, one game, and then two, one. Uh, one, one, one. They're playing, they're bunching up just a little bit more because there's more teams in here. And again, uh, two playing four, those are the closest teams. Uh, nine and five didn't work out uh, perfectly, but pretty close. Uh, and they worked away. But certainly that final game is a, a close one. And again, we're in the different uh, locations. Uh, they're a little more often in the B relative to the number of games, but that's because there's more, uh, more games happening here as well. Then the these sheets here uh, could be just printed and posted. So team one, three, six, seven for division one, you can enter their scores, uh, team one's score, and then team 
threes score team one, team six, team one, team seven. Either wins, ties, losses, uh, defaults, no shows, points, uh, ranking, uh, depending on how you want to uh, determine that. The legend is uh, down the bottom of each page. Uh, so that's how that would work. Uh, I should add that uh, you can only print you scroll all the way up here into these gray boxes and if you wanted to uh, print here uh, you couldn't. So if you wanted to fill in these numbers so you couldn't do it the way it is right now. Uh, depending on which form of word you're using uh, you just click on this version uh, review, protect the document, and then stop protection and now you could go in and type in uh, if you wanted to type in scores uh, you could type in by going through that little process. You just need to uh, unprotect the document from its from its form uh, status. You could also do that if you want to insert like a, a logo or something on these pages. You could also use that format to make that work that way. Let me then uh, take you to the uh, playoffs. So we could also do a round on playoffs. So we could uh, click on that. Uh, you can save it, you can download it, then go to uh, downloads or playoffs. And if everybody's in, we would pick all in. But in this case, we want to just have uh, the top two from two divisions. So we have two divisions, uh, the top two, let's just say we got them on two locations. So again, we got uh, a simulation playoff, two divisions, top two locations we can click that one and then we would uh, simply type of what we're doing here so playoffs uh, sorry the date to uh, August again uh, so division one so that'd be your first seed number one in division two is hopefully your second seed and then Three is hopefully, is hopefully, so hopefully it all worked out where you planned it. Uh, location A to A, location B to B, date, uh, Saturday, one o'clock, Sunday, two o'clock. You work your way through, and and there's your your, your playoffs. So one plays uh, four, two plays three. Again, that would be your second place of your first pool, your first place of your second pool. This would be your second place of your second pool or division. And this would be your number one of the number one pool or division. Uh, they would play, winners would play for that, uh, that championship. We both have them playing at the same time uh, because we had two locations. If you didn't want that, you just pick one location and it would separate the times. It would have them play first, it would have them play second, and then that would be your uh, third game. 